Hello everybody, it is once again time for me to get my thoughts on anime that have come out over the course of a year. You all know the rules, the anime need to have finished airing in the year that I'm talking about and this list is just my personal opinions. This year's list is a bit shorter than previous years being a top 7 of 2017, not because fewer great shows came out but because I like alliterations and I didn't get the chance to see a lot of them because I was busy watching older shows. But, even though I didn't get to see that many shows this year, the ones I did watch I enjoyed immensely, and I have a lot to say about them, so buckle up, and enjoy. Number 7, Attack on Titan Season 2. Back in my 2013 list, I rated the first season of this show quite highly. However, as fun as that show was in the moment watching it with friends, in retrospect my opinion of it has dropped immensely. This is mostly due to the side characters getting completely neglected in favor of the main trio, so when plot twists do happen involving these side characters, the impact of that twist is lessened greatly. That and a lot of scenes and plot points tended to meander a bit. But I'm happy to inform you all that a lot of these problems are addressed in Season 2, mostly with the side characters getting some much needed focus. It's almost jarring in a way. For example, the Potato Girl, who was nothing more than a meme in the first season, got an entire episode to herself where we found out about her backstory and motivations. This is true for a lot of the characters who are no more than background objects in Season 1. This in turn also helps fix the plot twist problem I was just talking about because when we are actually familiar with these characters, the things that happen with them feels more impactful. I mean, not every problem is fixed, there is still a lot of meandering and the large focus on the side characters caused the main trio to be neglected, but it is a step in the right direction, and with a season 3 already in the works, the show still has plenty of time to work out all the kinks, like better balancing the characters and having less meandering. Although a bit of meandering is okay. I just like the word meandering in case you couldn't tell. Number 6, Land of the Lustrious. Yo, this show really rocks! Get it? Because it's a show about people who are made of gems, which is a type of rock. But seriously, this is one of the most out there and interesting shows of 2017. Taking place in a sort of post-apocalyptic world where humans have died out and other forms of sentient life have shown up, the show puts most of its focus on world building, specifically the world's species of people made out of gems. There are a lot of large and small details in the show that I enjoy. Like why the gem people are at war with the other races and how the type of gem each character is made out of determines their strength in combat. But where this show really shines is in the animation. Being a show that mostly uses CGI, it's able to convincingly pull off a lot of cool perspective shots that would be difficult or impossible with traditional 2D animation. There are also a lot of shots of characters being torn apart, which should be really graphic, but because they're just rocks, it just looks like stones crumbling and falling apart, which is a really neat effect. I know that some people will probably complain that this show puts too much focus on visuals over story, However, with the main appeal of the show being its interesting world, I think that how the show portrays that world is just as important, if not more important, than the main story itself. Also, the Japanese voice actress of the main character is really great, definitely one of the best cute noise makers of our generation. With this show's bold and interesting world and animation, it's a real gem, and I would highly recommend checking it out. Okay, one more mineral pun, I promise. All the characters in the show have really good cleavage. <clears throat> anyway, next show. Number 5, Suki ga Kide. This show is one of the sweetest, most down-to-earth romance shows I've seen in the past I don't know how long. It doesn't have a lot of the things that bog down many shows in the same genre. First of all, the show's main relationship makes well-paced progress. The main couple's hookup doesn't happen as the series is about to end, but fairly early on into the show. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy when a story tackles this stage of a relationship, but it's just one of many stages of a relationship. I also love the main characters, which should have been obvious because it's hard for someone to like a romance show without liking the characters involved in that romance. However, I like them especially because of the dynamics they introduce into the show because they are so young. Because they are so young and in their first relationship, a large part of the story is them trying to figure out this whole relationship thing. Because of this, a lot of the things they do come off in a super awkward but they're trying their best sort of way that is very charming and sweet to watch. This whole age thing solves another problem I have with a lot of romance stories, pointless drama. Most conflict in the show comes not to be over petty arguments or simple lack of communication, but from genuine misunderstandings or not knowing what to do in a certain situation. And on top of all of this, the characters make efforts to quickly resolve their issues instead of having it last for a million years, and these conflicts serve to deepen their relationship in meaningful ways. Tsuki Gakide does a lot of things different from its contemporaries to improve the genre, but it's that comparison which is the reason why it's not any higher on my list. I believe that a lot of the things that this show does right should not be the exception, but the standard. We should have higher expectations for our romantic cartoons, damn it.
But don't misunderstand me, even without putting all these things into consideration, I think the show is a great story that is definitely worth the time of any fan of the genre. Number 4, Pokemon, I Choose You. Watching through Pokemon X and Y and Pokemon Sun and Moon is the most fun I've had watching a Pokemon anime since the original series. Both series were able to shake up the formula enough to make watching it fresh, fun, and exciting again. So I was a bit disappointed when the XY movies were the same old, legendary Pokemon is evil and Ash and friends need to stop it. This new movie, however, does not follow suit and is memorable and fun. Instead of being a side story of the main series, this movie is more of a retelling of the original series. I use the word retelling very loosely because after the first 10 or so minutes, the movie diverges from the original series to tell its own story with its own characters. Speaking of the characters, they are one of my favorite parts of the movie, especially Ash's new rival. While being a good villain in his own right, he is a suitable foil for Ash, making him rethink his ideals regarding Pokemon. The arc with Ash is another one of my favorite parts of the movie. It's interesting to think about, it gives the movie an overall theme, and that arc also allows the inclusion of a trippy symbolic dream sequence, which is always fun. Just like with the new anime series before it, this movie takes a lot of bold steps to help make the Pokemon series fresh and fun. So even if you're a longtime fan of Pokemon or you're unfamiliar with the anime series, this movie is worth your time. Number 3, Princess Principal. Because if there's one thing I like more than cute girls being badass, it's great original anime. I enjoy pretty much everything that this show does, which is quite impressive because it does a lot in its short runtime. But because of the way it presents its story and its characters, the show is able to weave everything together in a fun and interesting way. For example, the show's episodes are not in chronological order. This can be confusing if you're like me and don't pay attention all the time, but the show makes it easy to understand and uses its messing around with the timeline to help pace out the story and introduce things in a way that makes sense. For example, the first episode takes place in the middle of the timeline after the characters are introduced to each other and their team is set up. I like this because it serves to introduce the complex world of 20th century London that the story takes place in, which is much more interesting and important to know about at the start before learning the specifics of who the characters are and how they met. Speaking of the characters, they are another one of my favorite aspects of the show. First of all, everyone gets a good amount of backstory and character development, which is important because it gives the characters context in the story and that helps strengthen every other part of the show. And the episodes dedicated to character development are sprinkled throughout the show thanks to the non-linear timeline, so they never become overbearing. The characters in this show also have good reasons for being in the story. Each character has a specific reason for joining the team and they all play significant roles in the story. Nobody is there simply for one reason. Each of the characters also have relationships with individual members of the group, and that goes a long way to convey the feeling that they're all close friends. One character I like in particular is Chisei, who is a transfer student from Japan. This aspect of her character is most of the time played for laughs with the other characters commenting on the out-of-place Japanese things she does, which is really funny considering the fact that the people who made this show are also from Japan. But this part of Chisei's character is often depicted more seriously with her struggling to learn and adjust to a new culture. This is interesting enough in its own right, but I can also partly relate to her situation because I'm currently a transfer student from another country myself. I am well aware of the many problems that come with adjusting to a new culture, so it's nice to see that feeling not only portrayed in anime, but done so in such an interesting and optimistic way. There are also like a million other reasons why I think this is such a great show, but I've hopefully said enough for the moment to explain why I like it so much. With Flip Flappers last year and Princess Principal this year, Studio 3 Hertz is on a roll, and I'm interested in what they will continue to put out. Number 2, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Because there's only one thing I like better than dragons, and it's dragons dressed up in adorable outfits. Seriously though, the people over at Kyoto Animation are some of the best at making things cute and lighthearted, and this show is by no means an exception. There are many things that help invoke this kind of endearing atmosphere, like the round and colorful art style, but what I think really sells it are the characters. All the characters in the show act with the goal of making them and everyone around them happy. A good example of this is the main dragon maid, Toru, who is a maid for Kobayashi not only because Toru is indebted to her, but because she legitimately likes Kobayashi and wants to be her maid. I also like the character of Kana, not only because she's one of the most adorable and lovable characters in the show, although that is a large factor, but her inclusion creates a family dynamic in the show. Even though Kana is a dragon, she's still very young and immature, so paired with the adult businesswoman Kobayashi, the show is able to have plenty of wholesome family moments. Maid Dragon also gets a lot of points because it doesn't use its gimmick of cute girls that are dragons flippantly. The show makes a huge fuss about how these characters are dragons from another realm and are such out of place in normal society. There are also plenty of other plot points and aspects of this show that play into this theme of being abnormal, but the show is able to handle these themes optimistically. So with all these aspects, I think the show is able to have a lot of heart. I'm not 100% sure what people mean when they say something has a lot of heart. 
but when I use the term, it's referring to the feeling I get while consuming a piece of creative art like anime, and I can tell that the people making it care a lot about it and care a lot about sharing it with others. I'm also not sure what specifically about a piece of art triggers this feeling, but I think it might be a combination of little details in something, passionate and emotional themes, and probably plenty of other factors. But what is important for the moment is that this show gives me that feeling, and I like that feeling. But without further ado, my favorite anime of 2017 is... Neo Yokio. This show has an amazing, fully realized world, likable characters, stunning animation, and is definitely an anime and definitely deserves best anime of 2017. Probably even best anime of all years. Just kidding. As amusing as the Jaden Smith anime is, it is unfortunately not my anime of the year. That honor goes to... My Hero Academia second season. It happened, everybody. It finally happened. The thing I've been begging to happen for years. They made a really good streamlined shonen anime. A major problem with a lot of shonen like this in the past, like Bleach and Naruto, is that there are good stories in there, but they are bogged down by a lot of pointless scenes and plot points that struggle to do more than fill time. My Hero Academia does not have this problem at all. The show is constantly able to present its characters, story, and world in such a way that it never wastes time or has scenes that do nothing. However, this show doesn't just hit important plot points and move on, it spends just the right amount of time in the right places to develop these plot points and have them feel meaningful. Pacing is a difficult thing to talk about when it comes to discussing storytelling. It's one of those non-physical aspects of a story that is a combination of several things. When done wrong, it's very noticeable, but when done right, it strengthens every aspect of a story. However, being tightly written is not My Hero Academia's only strong point. It has a plethora of other things going for it. For example, the premise itself and what that does for the story. Having the story take place in a world full of superheroes where everyone wants to be the best superhero helps give the characters in that world a solid goal. But even though a lot of the characters' goals are the same, the motivation for that goal differs. With everyone vying for the same thing for different reasons, it creates a lot of unique rivalries and by extension, lots of cool fight scenes. Speaking of the fight scenes, those are one of the things benefited most by the tight pacing because something being meaningful is extra important in creating a good fight. Most of the fights in the show also don't happen for no reason. They happen either through a clash of ideals or one of those unique rivalries I was talking about. The fights are also engaging in the way that they play out because they aren't fights of simply brawn, but also brain. No character in the show has something as simple as super strength or an instant win button. Each character's superhero superpower has very defined strengths and weaknesses that they have to be aware of if they want to win. So each fight comes down to two unique powers interacting with each other and the people behind those powers using them in smart and creative ways. All of this is not even talking about the stellar animation and soundtrack, especially during these fight scenes. All of this very careful writing and attention to detail goes a long way to the feeling of something having a lot of heart that I was talking about earlier. But in case you couldn't tell for some reason, I really like this show, which is a bit surprising even to me because I didn't think this highly of the first season. The first season was a good introduction to the series, however it did spend a lot of time to set things up and blaze through plot points, so the pacing felt a little off. But the second season fixes all of this. The pacing is amazing, as I've said, but this season also focuses on a lot of the things that make it unique, like the characters and the themes of the show. Speaking of which, I haven't even talked about the complex villains or the show's themes about what it means to be a hero. But I could be here all day talking about this show if I did that. The point is, My Hero Academia is awesome, and with the season 3 already announced, it's looking to only get better. And that was my broad thoughts of anime of 2017. I enjoyed this year quite a bit. Lots of great original shows, lots of on-point adaptations, all stuff I like to see. Again, I didn't see everything of 2017, so I'm sure I'll go back and find more amazing anime from that year. But that is true of every year for me, more or less. But until next time, bye! Say goodbye to the people, Herbert. He doesn't, he doesn't talk too much.